All right, we're back at it. Wake the fake up. You know, filming, you know, last time we were talking, we were out on the Lanai on the Hawaiian Islands in the jungle surrounded by the cacao. Now we're, you know, in Southern California, back in our stomping grounds, up on a cliff overlooking the Pacific, and we're in the cool new Wake the Fake Up studio. How's it feel being in here, bro? Fantastic. Thanks for having me in here, and I'm super excited for the show. Yeah, me too. And we, you and I, we were just going back and forth over the last couple of days. Uh, we just got back from the the gem show in Tucson, and we had some major discoveries over there. And you and I have been talking about pathogens and viruses and parasites and Lyme disease and all these things that infest the body and confuse the body. And it was interesting. We read a passage by Steiner that said it's not so much to look at the specific pathogen, but look at the mechanisms of that pathogen and how it operates in the human body. And this has become, you know, a common conversation in the alternative health world right now. And it's starting to make its way into the mainstream is that we got to we got to figure out what we're doing with all these parasites in our body. These parasites are controlling us, they're controlling our minds, they're eating up things in our body. They're eat, you know, they're surviving on, you know, poisonous heavy metals that don't belong in the body like an overload of iron and a few other things like that but they're dictating the rate at our uh, the rate that our body ages because of the oxidative stress that they cause what what's your take on what we're dealing with today on parasites it's all about parasites i mean this whole thing of of parasites really started for me with the books by Hannah Kroger way back in 1993. And, and Hannah Kroger taught me way back then that you can't actually get a cold, cough, flu, or fever unless you have worms. And, and I, you know, I heard that. I was like, okay, well, you know, I never heard anything like that before. It was completely like, just completely was like something new. So I put that to work for the last, how long is that now? It's almost. 20 it's getting, years? It's getting, it's getting close to. 30 years. Is that 30 years? It's coming up on 30 years. Wow. Yeah. And so, and what a, what an amazing thing. I think she was right. And and it's not just worms. It's also round worms and hookworms and, and ascaris protozoa. and protozoa yeah. and amoebas and giardia and every, you know. Lime. Lime and Borrelia and all that stuff. So yep. she's right. I mean, it's just something that if you have a parasite load and it's a load then you're dealing with a compromised immune system. What you said right there is really interesting. It's a load, right? So we're going to have parasites in our body. It's just part of being human. It's part of living in this world. But it's when it gets to a certain point where it passes critical mass, where the body's not running cohesive with it, and then it becomes parasitic by definition, meaning one side is eating too much more and is operating at free will, and there's no more balance in the body. That's what you mean, right? Right. It's like leptosporidium or giardia. There's a certain load. There's a certain ma- amount that you consume where it overwhelms your system. Yeah. But there's also a load that we're carrying. Yeah, exactly. Right? And so that that's just it's a drag on yeah. the system. It's a friction on the system. You know, it's interesting. Dr. Otto Warburg said that most disease or all disease, for that matter, is a lack of oxygen in the cells. And what's interesting is if you reverse engineer that with what pathogens do is they stop your body's ability of getting oxygen to where it needs. Oh, what you're getting into is how they're trying to trick your body. They want a lower oxygen environment because they're by nature and by definition anaerobic. That's right, which means they breathe nitrogen. Mm -hmm. They're They're not breathing oxygen. And they're fermenting glucose and sugar. That's right which is why we're getting signals to eat sugar and have sugar cravings and to add all of that those resources and fuel for them to proliferate. Right, so they're both nitrogen and sugar sinks. Now the nitrogen, the overwhelming nitrogen would come from like excessive protein intake. And so it's interesting that both the like when you look at cancer for example, it's a nitrogen sink and it's a sugar sink. What's that telling us about cancer? Does it have something to do with p- 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 parasites? That's right. And so are you, you know, with your experience over the last 20, 25, 30 years, do you see a correlation in a lot of the way that people's disease rates are proliferating and how they're going into rapid levels of aging because of unmarked parasites in the body? Yes, that's connected. Absolutely. So we we have to constantly be alert to parasites. And this is interesting in our civilization. It's always like, oh, we don't have parasites here. It's over there. It's over the border somewhere. It's in Mexico. It's in in Thailand. Not in Western countries. Western countries. We've already dealt with parasites. Meanwhile, every cleanse that we do, I'm in the middle of a cleanse right now. I'm on the first day of a water fast. 
every cleanse we do, people send me pictures of the worms that came out. Yeah. Every cleanse. These are like West. These are people who live in Salem, Massachusetts. These are people who live in Chicago, Illinois. These are people who live in Tallahassee, Florida. I mean, these are just, you know, th- there's no parasites here. It's over in Mexico somewhere. Yeah. You, that, that, that's exactly what the parasite wants. Yeah. It, it's, it's, you don't have to be in third world, you know, swimming around in feces and, and some crazy, crazy level of sanit- sanitation to contract parasites. You can contract parasites from a handshake. You can contract parasites from the air. You can contract parasites from walking barefoot in the park or on the beach. If you have a dog or a cat, especially, you can attract parasites. It's sexually transmitted, we know that. It's in the foods. If you're eating foods that are not fully cooked, you can get parasites. You can get it from fruits and vegetables because it's in the soil. You can get it from sushi. A lot of people are eating sushi. Just one piece of raw tape fish. Worms. Tape worms. I've the seen tape worm and sushi connection, just to put that out there. If, like, if you have a history of eating sushi, whoa. It's intense. But you're right on about all that. Yeah. What are some of the symptoms that you've, you've come across? Because we know that, you know, brittle hair, you know, skin rashes, irregular heartbeat, unable to sleep properly, itching all over the body, especially in the rectum and the anus area at night, because that's where they're laying their eggs. There's all kinds of crazy stuff. Are you Have you looked into like those symptoms and stuff like that? It's crazy. Absolutely. But yeah. the most common symptoms are coughs, colds, fevers, flus, See that? That's I like what, what you're saying right now. Yeah, yeah. You see where I'm going with this? Well, it's your breakdown of the immune system. Yeah, it's just a breakdown of your immune system, and so your body then will go into it's. It's got a load, yeah. so it's going to try to detoxify. It's going to try to move the toxins out because really, it's not the parasites that's the problem. It's it's poop. It's what it's secreting in your system that's the problem. Kind of like that with probiotics. Probiotics are not you know they're great, but it's the acidophilin that's great. Right. Not necessarily the acidophilus. It's what the acidophilus secretes in your system. Right. And so that's really what it's all about is getting the, the poop of the parasite out, not just the parasite. Th- this is interesting because you're, what you're talking about is reducing the load, the overall load factor that the body has, the, the burden on the body. And we talk about that with you know modulating the immune system. Well, how do we do that? Because we're always thinking immune system, it's about boosting, it's about boosting. Well, it's really about regulating it and taking the pressure off. We talk about how you know certain battles were won and c- certain wars were won, right? And all of a sudden, if you have a front here, a front there, a front there, and you have different angles that you have to be fighting 24 seven, the line gets drawn thin. Same thing with our immune system. And that's what the way I look at parasites and, and bacteria and all these different strains. The lower burden we have in the body, the better ability we have to fight it and to have a chance. So we're not living in in pain. We're not living in, you know, lowered immune system. We're not getting colds four times a year and or, or consistently signing up for this flu and all this kind of stuff. We, we've it's kind of interesting. We've kind of think this is the norm. Right, right. This adds up over 30, 40 years. Imagine 30, 40 years of this, your, the, the oxidative stress that you've caused, permanent damage you've caused, and lack of life that you've lived. What if two, three years of your life has just been sick, right? We think that's normal. Well, I was just talking about a case. I was just working with a case where a guy had chronic strep throat all his life. And it turned into cancer. Yeah. That's common, that kind of stuff. Yeah. And so you got to deal with these things and root them out before it becomes a real crisis down the road. And that, this is true with, I think, almost every long term age related chronic inflammatory condition that it really begins with an infection. And then next thing you know, there's toxins and metals piled up on top of that, more parasites on top of that. Then you've got a certain viral load, then you've got a certain back, harmful bacteria load load that you're carrying around. It just goes on and on. And then eventually it can morph into a cancer. And a lot of these things that you're talking about are mutating as well because of all the different, you know, antibiotics and all these different, yes, all and, these steroids and all these things like that. And They're, the environmental toxins, but also the situation that the parasite likes to live in. Right. The parasite loves plastics. It loves heavy metals. That's right. It loves the chemicals of civilization. It loves the toxic pesticide residues. Interesting. So it, it thrives in mankind's own demise. Oh, okay, so now we're getting on to something interesting. Yeah. Which is, what it, why do we have mankind's demise? Why do we have all the pollution? What's the, what's the real cause Are of Are you it? talking about chicken before the egg or egg before the chicken? Yeah, what I'm saying is it's egg before the chicken. It's egg before the chicken. Yeah. So, so th- that's an interesting point. I think Steiner talks about that, and Steiner makes that point as well. It's like really at the at the at the root cause of 
our consciousness or, or lack thereof, thereof is because of a massive deficit from energies and spirits coming from within that has, has basically hijacked the system. It's, it's very difficult to refute the concept that parasites rule the world. Very difficult to refute that because as you get deeper into it, you see, God, this person has toxoplasmosis. This person has this viral load. This person has tapeworms. This person has ascaris. This person has hookworms. This, you know, and you get into liver flukes. And you, as you go down the list, you're like, well, who's really running the show here? Absolutely. Because we know that just a simple, like yeast candida, for example, simple parasite, can influence behavior across the board and all emotional factors and decision making. And just like, Toxoplasmosis, you know, that's putting you into a position where you're taking higher risks, where you're not really acknowledging the outcome or the risks that could come from those decision making. That's fascinating because that parasite always wants to go back to the host. That's fascinating that we're um, in a in a state of affairs with billions of people in this world, and there could be mechanisms that are governing all of our consciousness and be seated into our deepest inner thoughts and desires. I think you're onto something. And I've always inherently felt like that was the case, that we don't, we might not necessarily be operating with free will. And you know, Steiner's whole thing is the philosophy of freedom, right? And this isn't about being, you know, in jail or being behind bars, but it's also, but it's also about, it's at the root of it. It's being locked into your own dysfunction, right? In your dysfunctionality by not operating in your incarnated true nature versus another entity that is controlling your free will and telling you things and whispering in your ear and your thoughts. So we should get down that rabbit hole, like Steiner's whole take on parasites and that actually what evil is, is parasites. That's right. That's a, such an important insight. Yeah. And that evil is parasitic. It doesn't create anything. It hijacks stuff and uses it for its own own ends. And ultimately also a very important point, and this will help people understand our world, that the parasite eventually destroys its own host. It has to destroy its own host. It's in its program to destroy its own host, which you'd think that the parasite is looking to keep, keep you surviving as long as possible. But at some point, it just eradicates the host and will look to jump ship. Yes. Right? Right. And that's why it's so easy to spread parasites, right? If it wasn't easy to spread parasites, they'd live in com communal fashion into the host forever. And then just and then just figure out a strategy to go. Steiner, um, you know, would would say that this is an aramonic energy, right? And you and I have talked about Lucifer and Aramon. Yeah, well, the, no, they're both. They're There's, both. Right? Well, many of the parasites we're dealing with, you know, many for many insisting types of parasites that form shells and form biofilms. Those are aramonic, but there are parasites, for for example, certain types of limes that. Or the brain. They're disintegrative. They disintegrate tissue, so they're luciferic. Let's talk a little bit about that. So, you know, you can compare aramonic with philistine and calcification and the hardening of the body, which makes sense why they would wrap themselves in a cocoon and, and basically protect themselves with a biofilm. Uh -huh. That's burrowing into the body and laying position into the physical matter, where other, thing, where other parasites are actually, you know, disintegrating, eating everything up which is a luciferic energy and creating gaps in space in the body, right? That was a fundamental insight by Rudolf Steiner that I had never heard before, but I've taken that to my understanding of parasites, that there are luciferic parasites and aramonic parasites. Most of the parasites that we're dealing with today are aramonic parasites. The the conversation that we're having, I'm sure a lot of people are, are trying to understand and, and figure out, okay, well, what, what does this all mean for me? Right. Yeah. And I think that's the most important p position to have is, and, and you and I, we like to talk about things on a holistic level so people can see it for what it is. Because without knowing, without the knowledge and the information and the awareness, it's hard to shine a light on this something because it's, it's navigating all over the place and you, and you can't really zero in on it. So, what, what are we going to do about this situation? How does someone listening to this t take, take heed? First, you have to overcome the parasite's number one prerogative, which is to make sure you don't know it's there. That's number one. So that makes it a prerogative for me every year, about four times a year, to do parasite cleansing. And that means I'm going to take a, a whole host of parasite herbs. I'm going to make sure I cleanse and fast. So I'm going to starve them out. I'm going to starve their food out. 
and then I'm going to see if I can mechanically remove them. Bowel cleansing, for example, is a good way to do that, colonics and enemas, and then using things like really good and interesting Tesla-style laxatives like magnesium oxide, really rich magnesium with ozone, actually, yeah. and, and see if I can just flush them out. And, and that is a very effective strategy. Let's talk a little bit about ozone. You and I have been doing ozone therapies for you know, almost a decade now, you probably longer. Um, you know, I, I do the Ebu machine, uh, you know, where it's basically like a dialysis where they're taking out my blood supply and ozonating the blood and ozone, oxygen rich blood goes back into my blood supply. So ozone's unstable oxygen. It's O3. It's a heavier ox oxygen and, uh, and it's safe in all the cards because our body knows what it is. It's not like chlorine or something like that, you know, where it, it has a, terrible reaction to our body, our blood vessels, you know, the enzymes in our body, our tissues and things of that nature. Ozone detonates viruses, pathogens, fungus, all the things, parasites, all those things, by basically surrounding them and, and starving them out, right? That's, 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 kind that's of how it works. That's basically the idea. And yep. it's, it's really comes down to the idea that we're just an oxygen breathing organism. Yep. And so are the, all the things that live with us, our probiotics, they're all oxygen breathing too. Yep. And everything that's not breathing oxygen, it's got to go. It's got to go. And the ozone is reactive. Like you said, it's like, it's heavier. It's got an electron attached to it. Yep. But it's not just O3. It's also O4, O5, O6, O7, O8, O9, O10, O11, O12, O13. It's, you know, it can be long chain. Sure. And that's, that's why a lot of times, for example, when I'm home, I'll bubble ozone through olive oil and then breathe it. Yep. You can't normally breathe it. It's too aggressive against your mucosal membrane. O ozone's very aggressive. Yep. But if you bubble it through olive oil, it picks up all the O3, O4, O5, O6, all the lower- Volatile, ones. volatile gases. Yeah, extremely volatile stuff. Yeah. But the longer chain stuff makes it through, so you get the ozone in, but it's not as reactive, so you can breathe it. Yeah. And now it's very effective against respiratory stuff. Absolutely. Crazy effective. Yep. And that's, that is a story they, whoever they are, which, who, by the way, they are the parasites. That's part of it. Okay. Yeah. That's what they don't want you to know about. Of course. They're operating with that entity. They want that entity to keep going. Yes. So we've been working on a parasite formula. Um, I would say more immune modulating formula for the last 18 months. And it's finally come to fruition. You and I have, you know, I've consulted with you, I've talked to you about this for almost like six months now. And through trial and error, we're finally there. And um, I, I don't know what to say, but I've, I've never been so excited for a formula, for something that can change the game for so many people, um, something that you don't have to treat as a, as a cleanse for three days, something that you can consistently use. And let's get into that a little bit. Okay. Yes. Well, are you are you pumped? I'm super pumped about it. I mean, it's it's something that you know you've been working on it so hard, but I also think it's it's part of this incredible lineage that Rudolf Steiner really activated. Right. It, it's like you, you're actually bringing to fruition something that anthroposophical medicine or Rudolf Steiner style medicine wanted. It's interesting that you say that. You know, it was. A combination of our conversations, understanding biodynamics, understanding the elements of nature, right? The wisdom of nature and how nature works to clean itself and to keep things in a regulatory balance where it doesn't cave into overloads of parasites or mold or bacteria and stuff like that. Something where it's thriving, kind of like how the ocean works or how a rapid stream works. You know, there are elements in those that are beautifying and implosionary energy. So that renewing, sustains, renewing, you know, youthifying things of that nature. And that's how this was designed was under that guidance and that, and that mechanism. It, it's not allopathic, right? It's not one directional, it's nonlinear, it's dynamic. Um, well, I remember when we were in the islands and I showed this to you and you looked at me and you're like, this has never been done before. Nothing at this scale has ever been done before. Let, let's get into it a little bit. I, I want to say that this idea of finally getting all the parasites out and really being vigilant about it is actually part of the destiny of humankind. Because again, those parasites are affecting our consciousness. So therefore they affect our goals, dreams, and desires. They affect our dominant thoughts. They affect what we believe is right and what we believe is wrong. All of that is affected by it. So when you have a product like this, this new parasite killing formula, parasite modulating formula, immune modulating formula, however you want to look at it, you're, you're talking about something that requires human agency working with nature to improve the destiny of humankind. That's alchemical. 
that is uh i love the human agency i love the idea of you know garnering our strength and our fortitude and our intestinal fortitude right where a lot of those critters like to hang out in that gi track right and being able to operate with free will you know it's like how many uh, how many people are operating in free will today have incarnated and are actually in their free will are actually standing by their truth or 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 living a life of intention and the more we look at what's happening right out there with the pathogenic diseases leading towards autoimmune then leading to something crazy or some other crazier pathology this is a this is a real epidemic here that we're dealing with it's affecting everybody in everybody. one way or another and so a, a strategy for dealing with the castaways the stowaways the parasites that are burdening our system is really an important strategy for humankind. Again, the entire directive of a parasite is to make sure you don't know it's there. Yeah. Right now, if you take that into, for example, politics, or if you take that into, for example, history, you see this pattern being played out and you see the surreptitious nature of the parasite working its way through the body politic. And so how do we address it? We address it with each individual person. We stop it with human agency. I love that. Standing up and take and, and acknowledging it and making a decision at that point. That's really human agency, right? Absolutely. Like, like, not anymore. Yep. We see and recognize yep. what's happening. This is the we're, we shine the light on it. You're not able to do that anymore. Your time is up. That's it. That's it. That's it. Yeah. And then we're smart about it because we do it consistently. Right. We don't we don't let our guard down and go, oh, I've got the parasites out. Now I can let my guard down. No, no, no. That's not how this place works. Yeah, that's not that's not real. That's, that's not, not real that's, life, right? Right. There's like, some logic that has to apply to the illogic it's here. It's discipline. It's like, yeah. you know, I have to move my body every day. I've got to eat the right things for my body every day. I've got to make sure I drink water every day. I got to also make sure I don't let parasites take over my consciousness. And then I also have to be aware that they may have already done so. Yep. And then they're they're on their way out. And I'm regaining sovereignty. It's 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 like when you get to the the awareness of how big this is, it's it's mind blowing. It's massive. Yeah, it's a, it's a massive area of of human potential. And so this is why, by the way, all these years I've spent, you know, like we can never address the problems of politics or crime or any of this stuff or those things that plague hum humanity, the banksterism, whatever that it is, until we address the parasites. And and so that's what's that's what we're doing right here. If you're listening to this, this is really profound because we're always we, we seem to think we're solving something, but at the end of the day, we're just, you know, covering it up and putting dusting something you know putting the rug over the dirt and stuff like that <laughs> or putting you know duct tape over a wound or something like that this is you know symptomology at its finest right and we see that in pharmaceutical industry it's all symptomology symptomology one direction linear and things like that but what david is saying is that at the end of the day all the the failures in our civilization all the breakdowns in every single sector from the medical system to the educational system to the political system to you know all the wars and all the strategies of how do we get over our on our neighbor and scarcity and poverty conscious all of these things quite possibly inherently at the root of it is a parasitic energetic and material infection that has invaded our entire reality and this isn't some sci-fi, this isn't some scary movie, but at the truth of it, it's real. And the study and the case studies on this are real. Viruses are real. Parasites are real. These things, these bacteria that are controlling us, just the candida and yeast affections alone. Do you know how many people are dealing with that? And it's not just women, men too. And so this is a this is I think this is one of the most profound conversations to have. And I, and there's so many ways to go about this of looking at this. And I I think of I think of children that are infected and I think of the elderly that are completely infected because of their lack of oxygen in the body, right? And so and they're and they're just stuck on the the, the pharmaceutical train and just getting older and older at a faster and faster rate. The, the pharmaceutical train is part of 
them. It's part of them. It's part of the parasite system. That is a parasitic. And so what we're what we're talking about here, like for example, ozone, getting the herbs in, getting the, getting the electronic medicine in, you doing these things regularly, is part of the destiny of humankind. It's that you must keep the parasites out of your body. You must keep your viral load down. It's a prerogative of the, of of a human being, and we must start educating people of, of this from the time they're a child. Yes. Which, by the way, you have been educated about this since the time you were young. More, I mean, nobody has gotten that kind of education probably ever. Yeah, I remember learning this at probably around 12, understanding how parasites function and how they control our minds and things like that. Now it's become almost mainstream. People are seeing it all over on videos and stuff like that. But it really is mind control here and energetic control and just really controlling our destiny. And so... Let's uh, let's talk about this formula, and okay. this is an amalgamation of uh, you know twenty five years of just having this awareness and also understanding a biodynamic approach as opposed to just eradicate and destroy. And so this this formula is incorporating the wisdom of our soil through mineralization. It's incorporating the wisdom of ancient herbs and medieval herbs. It's got biblical attributes to it. It's got otherworldly in terms of our atmosphere attributes to it. Um, there's a traditional Chinese herbal medicine approach here. There's an Ayurvedic approach. Approach. There's a Druid approach in here as well. Um, let's start off with it, and I'll, I'll go down this line with you. And I remember showing this to you, so just hear me out. What we're talking about right now is our capsules that are going to be holding a liquid in that. Okay, so think of a liquid capsule. And that capsule is going to have a, a symbiotica ozonated bioactive lipid matrix in that. And so we're going to explain what that means. So basically, it's a combination of monolaurin. You're familiar with monolaurin? Absolutely. Antiviral. Antiviral coming from coconut. We have clove oil in there. We have oregano oil in there, which is one of my all-time favorites. The clove oil is an amazing dewormer, especially for children. Absolutely. Oregano oil is well known as being anti-infectious agent. Across the board. Across the board. Across the board. We have, and we have whole fruit olive in there, fractionated. Oleurupine is an absolutely important substance, especially against certain types of cancers, breast cancer in particular. It's one of the most important anti-aging substances. It's an aromatase inhibitor. Wow. It's an aromatase inhibitor. Right there, what you just said is very powerful. Absolutely. Um, all of these compounds are the base of the product, and they've all gone through a triple ozone pass, meaning we've got maximum O3 encapsulated into those oils, okay? Which is, which is bringing you oxygen, every, oxygen, everybody. What does your body breathe? Oxygen. Oxygen. The more oxygen, the better. <laughs> now, picture, picture these capsules. You got the oils in there. Now we're going to have something called microsphere beads within the oil and this is this whole concept is this is going to be a delayed release okay so these are going to take it's going to take time for them to start activating into the lower gi track and we'll start with this those spheres are made up of a combination of andrographolide whoa andrographis is one of the most bitter compounds there is and one of the most powerful antivirals and probably one of the most important Borrelia killers and spirochete killers ever known. Spirochete Borrelia, exactly, goes right after that. This is the Indian echinacea. Oh, and it's, it's I've grown andrographis, by the way. Have you? Yep. Beautiful. Bird. I love it. It's, I love eating the flowers. You can't, it's really hard to eat the leaves. I mean, you the, can't You do can't it. really eat the leaves, but, but the, the flowers. flowers. Delicious, right? Yeah, it's good. And so this is co complexed with pure curcuminoids to a two to one ratio. There's a combination of adding curcumin and andrographilis that makes it into some synergistic powerhouse. Those two together, uh, I'll show you the case studies on that. So that was the thinking behind that. Epic. Right? Also, um, allegic acid, okay, which is very known antiviral, very powerful flavone, incredible, incredible compound. Then we have bicaline and bicalin which is a combination which is a co-complex bicol skull cap skull cap yeah and if you want to talk a little bit about skull cap it's one of my favorites it really rose to prominence due to its use against lyme's disease and and i've grown skull cap as well and i just love the flowers of it it's beautiful it's a beautiful plant and what interesting compounds interesting again spirochete fighter that's right 
luteolin. Ooh, luteolin. Yes. Ooh, interesting. So we have a solid dose of pure luteolin in there, which, you know, in my opinion, adds to the reinforcement of balancing the system here, right? As opposed to just destroy and destruction. What we wanted to do is create a synergistic effect, and luteolin does that. It's a, it stands up almost like a quercetin, if you will. Now, here's my favorite. Caffeic acid phenyl ester. Oh. Otherwise known as CAPE, and one of the most powerful antiviral compounds in the world. Caffeic acid is basically the active compound in B propolis. And we are able to have a, a 100% pure source in here and a solid, solid dose. So when I said biblical early, because you know propolis is in the Bible and stuff like that, and bees, they know what they're doing when they're making their hives and they're getting all the tree resins and all the resins, all that stuff. That's really where the propolis is made from. You handed me a big chunk of propolis when we were out on the farm. That was incredible. I have some really epic photos of that. So this all together is co-complex in these microbeaded spheres, okay? And that's, by the way, that's a very expensive ingredient. I mean, it's, there's no corners being cut here. This is not some kind of like, oh, let's come out with some cheap thing. We'll throw it together. It, nothing like that going on here, folks. I got news for you. This is a very expensive particular ingredient. It doesn't have to be in there, but you put it in there. I put it in there. It was it was actually a tough decision just because of the cost basis, but I was just like, what are we doing here? It's, it's the most powerful thing. It is the most powerful thing. It's, it's like, you know, if I had to liken it to something you're familiar with, maybe to the audience, it's like the hydroxychloroquine. It's like kind of that level. It's beyond that level personally, but it's it's it's, it's it very like close. That. It works exactly like that. Really good uh, analogy there um, or comparison, excuse me. That that's that it, it works on that level as an antiviral. And there's some interesting studies on it with in regards to like HIV. So if you know people who listen to this, look up caffeic acid phenyl ester and type in HIV studies and just have fun with that. Um, now let's talk a little bit about the the you know the vitamins and minerals in here. So we have you know the, the color of this product that we came up with was a, is a beautiful copper color, right? As we know, copper is anti-parasitic. It has a subatomic charge that basically detonates parasites and viruses on the spot, and worms and worms and all those things. So we have we have copper biglycinate in there, which is one of the most bioavailable forms of copper. We also have selenium in there. We have a trademark version of their Seleno XL. Uh, which is grown on Saccharomyces, which is a really incredible form of selenium. We have zinc by glycinate in there. We also have iodine in there as potassium iodide. And we have vitamin A in there, retinal palmitate. These are all antiviral, antibacterial, antiparasitic compounds that make up the vitamin and mineral dosage of this formula. Wow. <laughs> what do you think of that? That's epic. I like the retinoid at the at the end of it all. Of right? course, right? You got to have those color pigments and that's that's part of the medicine. It's part of the medicine. It's it's color pigment, it's acidic. It it knows what to eat up and what to you know break apart, right? Awesome. Now we have the Symbiotica Balanced and Harmony Co-complex blend, the proprietary blend. So now we're dust those spheres with this product. It's almost it gets rolled around. And I want to also tell you that this is um this is a labor of love. Right. This is the, this is taking time. There are we have we have team of scientists that are putting this together in its staging process. This isn't just chopping up or milling, you know, some biomass and encapsulating it and saying take twelve of them. This is a really strategic process. Very expensive to nothing do this. like this has ever been encapsulated before, folks. Just so you know. So we'll start with this. So we have berberine root. So berberus. Berberine. Right. Berberine, as you know. Tell, tell Persian, what, by the way, it is Persian. Yes. It's it's like that Pakistani Iranian, like that area right there, right? Right, exactly. Which is, you know where Rumi's from, right? Right. So that's interesting. What's your take on berberus? I, I love berberus. I love it. It's a it's an amazing medicine. It's a kind of a sharp medicine, um, excellent immune modulator, and just something interesting over the years that I've come across, kind of repeatedly in different uh, parasite formulas. Like you want to get the parasites out, berberine. Berberus. Berberus. Right. What amino acid is the most antiviral amino acid? Do lysine. You know? L lysine. So we have pure L lysine in there. We have cinnamon in there, of course. Cinnamon has antiviral, C antibacterial cinnamon properties. Cinnamon is incre an incredible anti aging substance, too, by the way. Cinnamon tea. 
incredible just that by itself yep it's ability to regulate blood sugar and all that stuff all plays to to its part into perfection um we have black elderberry in there so so black elderberry is antibacterial there's a lot of cool stuff substance i've seen birds for example i grow black elderberries lots of them and i've seen like the the giant uh it's the woodpecker the big one with the big bill, yeah. it will come for those at it, the end of the season. It's probably, it knows what it's doing. It knows what it's doing. Cleaning it knows, itself it, out. Normally they're going after worms and they're pecking into trees and things like that, but it will come for those. It's interesting that nature, animals of nature, they know that they're dealing with parasites and they do things about it in nature to help get, get rid of them. Right, yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, it's fascinating. Um, we also have... Uh, so, so it's we have the anthocyanines Ooh. from from the elderberry in there. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Just just so we're clear, um, we got ginger ginger rolls in this product, which is extremely antiviral. Which you know everyone knows ginger is Ayurvedic and has powerful powerful resistance to bacterial strains and infections. Yeah, as an anti nausea agent, also. That's right. Um, this one's cool. We have boron as boronic acid and hydrogen borate Ooh! now boron by the way has been it's been touted as one of the great things against radiation sickness Mm -hmm. it's been touted as one of the great antiviral substances heavy metals heavy metals it's a it's a protector of the body i know people who eat borax Right, that, or soak in borax. I definitely wash my clothes in borax. I'm hooked on that. I mean, yeah. especially if I'm coming off of planes, borax, borax, borax. It's an evaporite. That's a cool word to look up. Let's talk about that because I, I looked up. I, I was looking at evaporate. So it, it basically it diffuses particles and compounds that want that have, we should have no part of, right? And 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 eats them up essentially. How, how does that or work? Displaces them. Okay, so right? it, it pushes them off. Blocks their uptake. And by, by evaporate, though, I really mean the, the way it was formed. So, for example, like in California, central California, you, in the deserts, were once underwater. And then those waters evaporated. And they left behind, those salty oceans left behind certain evaporites. And one of them is borax. Interesting. That's fascinating. Um, grapefruit seed extract. <laughs> oh, boy. I've been using grapefruit seed extract for, uh, you know, probably 20 years we know someone that had a very interesting reaction to grapefruit seed extracts. Very, very strong, strong stuff. So we've powder coated these spheres with grapefruit seed extract. And got it down to an a acceptable dose that the body will accept. It's very strong stuff. So grapefruit seed extract is really good against amoebas and leptosporidium and E. coli and certain bacterial problems H. like that. H. pylori. H. pylori. Yep. Black walnut. Oh, of okay. course. That's, that's a classic. Yep. Cat's claw. Oh, another classic. Wormwood and wormwood, another one, Artemisia. Artemisia. So we, we were, were just picking the other day out on our hike here in the right. here in the canyon. So all of that, all all of that, that whole co complex has been turned into a micronized powder and has been powder coated onto the microspheres, wow. just to give you kind of an idea, and then dried up. So all of that is involved in three of these capsules, you're getting that per cert, you're, you you know, you're basically getting a solid dose. That's what we're working with right now. Now we have no idea what's going to happen. We know individually what all these compounds do. We know at these dosage and at this quality, but we don't know. We really don't know. My, my whole thing is that instead of having to just, you know, have, and I believe in cleanses hundred percent, especially how you're living, depending on what, what you just experienced. But what if we could just modulate our system every day throughout the month and not have to go into deficits anymore. What's that going to do for our lives? What do you think? It's going to be, it's, it's a game changer. I mean, this, this is a level of, this is like what really actually science is. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like most science is like some bot, you know, parasite stuff. It really is. I mean, and when I mean that, I'm, I'm saying like most of the sciences is controlled by parasitic type of entities that don't have your best interest in mind. They're actually. It's misdirection. Yeah. It's misdirection. Misdirection, which, very, which is very parasitic. Like very, look over here. Don't see this. Yeah. <laughs> right. Totally. Slide, yes. slide of hand. Slide of hand. Absolutely. Illusionist. Mm-hmm. Very parasitic. That's part the luciferic energy of of 
uh, parasitic energy. Right, it's false light. False light. Look over here. We're the light. We're actually the guru over here. Look over here. Meanwhile, yeah. don't look at this. Yeah. And so it's going to be it's going to be a complete game changer. I mean, I'm just on every level. I mean, I'll just tell you some of the things that are most exciting to me about getting this in my body regularly. The caffeic acid. Yeah. You know, that's a big one. I I have made many extracts of propolis over the years, and I whenever I run out of it because it's homemade stuff. You know, it's just like I'm like oh, you know, I miss it. Yeah. But this is a way of getting some of that energy in. Some you know some of the the magic of these ozonated compounds that are able to be absorbed. It's not just going to go into your intestines. It's going to be able to be absorbed. Go in your bloodstream. It's going to go into your bloodstream. Go into your brain. Go into other places of the body. And we've been looking. Just the other day, I did an eleven and a half minute video that I published. A friend of mine is a micro, microscopist, and he was looking at the blood of people today and showing all the problems that are new today. I don't want to deal with those problems. We're all dealing with those problems because we're all around each other. We're picking it up from breath. We're picking it up from the air and our food and our water and just touching each other and sex and all the other stuff. So what are you going to do? Well, you're going to have something like this that's going to be in your back pocket. Now, if you start coupling this with, for example, occasionally going and getting ozone or occasionally doing a parasite cleanse and, you know, in full earnest where you're doing the bowel cleansing too, or you're using electronic medicine, you're talking about strategies that are at the very leading edge of health in the world, in the world. Mm. That's so cool. That's so exciting. Yeah. I, I think about all the messages that I receive on a daily basis, and I'm and I'm sure it's the same with you because it's it's similar frequency. Is that people are dealing with, you know, all kinds of conditions that they have no idea what's going on, right? And they're just calling them autoimmune, but at the root of it, it's some kind of pathogenic breakdown in the body, right? They're they're dysregulated and they're under stress. Yeah. Right. Because if your body can't properly digest food, for example, or break down protein because of a parasite, or can't you know properly you know matriculate some some kind of food that they're eating, what's going to happen? You're going to have these types of die offs and these types of effects in the body where people are, are dysregulated. Dude, you just said a really important word: die off. Die off. Touched on that yet? Yeah. This is an important concept in, in parasitology: is that when you start taking in these types of compounds, like what's going to be in this formula, or ozone, or you start cleansing your bowels out, and suddenly you know you're getting more oxygen into your system, and you're bringing more chlorophyll into your system, things like that. Herxing, like or, Herxheimer. It's a Herxheimer reaction, yeah. which means yeah. you're going to have some die off, and yeah. it's and the parasites are going to come off in the layers that they were formed. Yeah, that's fascinating. That's fascinating. The outer layer first, and then you go deeper and deeper. And so there's never really a quick fix. And so having a product like this that's consistent, you just stay with it, stay on the program, or really stay on the D program. Stay on the program. Yeah, Yeah. that you can finally get the layers out. And a lot of that is, it's a it's a lot of it's really fun, I will say that. And sometimes Herx reactions or Herxheimer reactions are really rough. Yeah, you got to go through it, Yeah, right? And that's just like anything else. Like if, if, if you're not creating friction and there's not like a war happening and a, and a fallout, then you're not getting into the root. Right. And a lot of these things are rooted into on a deep, deep level. My my whole thing is that if, if we start, you know, getting a product like this in our body, we start moving our body, we start working on our breath, we start hydrating properly, we're mineralizing. Now we're putting in ourself, are putting our ourselves in a situation to succeed, right? Well said. I was just thinking that. Momentum. Yep. Right. Peak performance. Peak performance. Get true access to your your brain and your capabilities. Your freedom. Yes. Yeah. This is a freedom, this is a freedom movement. And that's really at the end of the day, that's what I want people to start feeling. Because a lot of people are prisoners in their body because they're they're overridden by all kinds of things. And and if they have a if they're overburdened by heavy metals, most likely that's a pathogenic problem as well, you know, because they're they're creating the they process. They like the heavy metals. Of course. See, again, let's just go back to this. Let's hit this idea again. Why do we have the heavy metal toxicity and the plastics toxicity? Why do we even have the pollution problems that we have today? Why are they spraying in the skies? Why are they spraying everywhere? Why is it in the water? Parasites. That's right. It all goes back to one. There's so, I, I, you and I can go so much deeper on, that. Deep I on think, that. I think that's a, a separate conversation where we can get. We'll go more into the spirit and actually more into. Um, you know, probably the next time we can start, as this starts to come out, we can break down exactly what oregano is doing in the body. We can break down exactly what caffeic acid is doing in the body or luteolin or andrographol or cat's claw and all that stuff and how they actually function in the body and why they're, why they have that ability and why nature created them in their state to have that ability, which makes sense because there, there needs to be stability in the forest. There needs to be st- stability out in the farms. There needs to be stability out in nature. Something has to develop the faculty of protection and to resist, right? It's about resistance and saying, you know what? 
you're not coming here today. You're not no you do not have a green light today. Yes. Right? Yeah. You're not coming through the door. You're not coming through the door. Yes. And so that's elemental energy. And that's what that's really what I've grown to love about this movement. Outside of anything else, this is the most inspiring part of it is really not fighting nature, but capturing nature and 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 working with her. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I think that's that's the way forward. We know that. I've I've studied it quite a bit as to like, you know, why are people so sick? And what you know, what what is what's going on in their consciousness? A big part of it's fighting nature. Yeah. We're not fighting nature. Yeah. We're working with nature. We're using nature's magical tools. Yeah. And all the incredible compounds and all the incredible formulas and things that have been gifted to us over the ages and now put together in a way that's simple. This is the best news ever. Best ever. Um, I appreciate this conversation. This is going to be, again, um, just, a, a, I would say, our launch pad into going into the deeper, deeper awareness of herbology and Ayurveda and TCM and really the constitution of those, you know, holy, holy programs of understanding how our bodies integrate with our mother from soil science to herbs to our cosmology and just who we are today in this 21st century Gregorian calendar. We're, we're right there. We're at the precipice. This is it. You know, there's no, it's not about yesterday. It's not about two weeks from now. It's like this moment and we're carving out a whole new future. It's exciting to do that with you, brother. Fantastic. A new <laughs> destiny for humankind. I'm really proud of you, dude. Yeah. Fantastic. Proud, Great of, job. proud of us. I'm proud of everyone that was involved in this yes. project. This, Tremendous. You know. But it's a it's a culmination of forces, yeah. but it there had to be someone who came along and put it all together. And that's really you, bro. So good job. I mean, you, you know, you led the charge for sure. I'm, I'm humbled by that. And I'm I'm excited for everyone. And I can't wait to see what, what happens here and what we learn from it. And like I said, you and I and all of everybody around us, we're forever a student. And we're going to continue to grow and continue to evolve and continue to work and, and, and really fight for the cause and fight for the, the true freedom of humanity. And um, it's under my opinion, your opinion, and Dr. Rudolf Steiner's opinion, um, that this is the root of it all. And we're getting there. Yes, we're getting there. Thanks so much, bro. Good okay, job. Okay, big love, bro. Big love.